Welcome back to Adobe Lightroom Classic. And today we're gonna to take a look at all the stuff that's up here and available, but we haven't gone over it yet. So yeah, there's a lot of other stuff that you can do in Lightroom and it's not really associated with any quickies or anything up here. So what we're gonna end up doing is just kind of going over some of this. Now, there's gonna be aspects that I'm gonna spend more time on because they're more important and there's gonna be items that are less important. So I'm not gonna spend as much time on those subjects. So let's go ahead. We're gonna come up here to the file menu. Now, if you do want to create a new catalog, as we can see right here, we've got a new catalog. Your catalog is right here. You don't have to use the catalog that's generated when you install the program. Yes, you can create multiple catalogs if you want. If you wanted to open another catalog, all you would do is click this up here. You'd see that name right there located for the catalog once you do open that. Open recent, so if you have multiple catalogs, you can open recent ones. You can optimize your catalog. Not really sure what that exactly does. I have done it once to see, and it just kind of does something on its own. I'm guessing it just does something to help it run a little bit better. We have a manual way to do import photos and videos. Obviously you can just go down to import. It makes no sense to come up here and do this. So you can import from another catalog. So if you had images in another catalog and you wanted to import, that is an option. You could import from a Photoshop elements catalog. I've never used Photoshop elements in my life, but I guess you can do that. You can do a tethered capture. And what this would be used for, if you had your camera, you could hook this up to Lightroom, and as you take the photos, it will import them, and that would allow clients or art directors, or even yourself to see what you're doing on a bigger screen than the back of your camera. Though you do need to be tethered, so you'll need a long cord. We have an auto import, so you could set up auto import settings. To do that, you need to come in here, click on auto import, and you need to fill out this information and then you could just can do an auto import so you don't have to go through the setup all the time. Right here is how you would import develop profiles and presets. So if you bought some presets from somebody, you can import them here at this location. Obviously export, we've gone through that. We can export as a catalog. So if you wanted to export as a catalog, that's an option. You can email a photo from here. If you want to manage your plugins or extras that you have associated with it. So you can see I have on one software integrated into this, just like JPEG mini, I also have integrated with it. So that's something that you could do. This is the quick key for show your target collection. You can save a quick collection. You can clear a quick collection and you can set a quick collection as a target collection. Next, we have our library filters. These are just different ways to sort or deal with images. Right now, you can come in here, you can see any of that stuff is on. Next, we have library filters, and these are just different ways to filter images. You can come in here and change anything that you want, but those options are obviously available. We've got page setup, that's for printing, and we've got our printer options. So let's go up into the edit menu. And look, there's not a lot of stuff new here. So we've got select all. We've got our copy and paste settings right now. We haven't copied anything or we don't have anything selected. If I was to just click on an image, I could copy it if I wanted. The different ways to sort your images that we've already gone over. We've got spelling options. We've got some dictation and emoji symbols that we can add to it. The next section is the library. Remember, the library is the browser section. So you could come up here and create a new collection or you could just go down here and do the new collection. All that stuff is available down here. This isn't something that I use. So it's not something new that we don't have. These are just different ways to filter your image. We have a refined photos option. Next thing we have are the options to rename a photo or convert a photo to a DNG. All of these options are available on import. If you want to find missing photos, and this is helpful, a lot of times I'll do find missing photos. They show up with a little exclamation mark here in the right-hand side of the screen. 
and it will show just all the missing photos and then I'll delete them from the catalog because most likely I'm not gonna use it. And then it says validate DNG files, not sure why you'd wanna do that, just checking to make sure they're okay would be my guess. You can find image by faces again, so if you wanted to repeat the process, that's something that you could do. This is a way to set your previews. We've already gone over how to set your previews, but this is a manual way to do it. We've got our plugin extras, nothing available right now, and we can go to the next photo. A lot of these are just the slower way of doing something. Most of these options are available already. Our next section is photo. So the quick key for add to target collection, meaning if you wanted to take an image and add it to your target collection, you just hit the letter B and it would send that photo over there. Open in loop, so there's your quick key for that. That's just to open the image in the loop view so you can kind of zoom in and see what's going on. I actually can't stand the loop view. Show in finder, go to folder in library. None of this stuff is really helpful. So let's go ahead, let's see, edit in. So these are our different options for editing in. You can see right now my default edit is Photoshop, which is Command E, but I can also send to these other programs. Lightroom is automatically recognizing them. But if I wanted to send something to effects in on one photo, I could come here and do that. Photo merge. Now photo merge is part of Photoshop. So what you would be doing is sending it over to Photoshop, but in this case, you would go into HDR, Panorama, or Panorama and HDR. Enhance, this is just a simple way to enhance your photo. You click it, it does something, and hopefully it works correctly. The next thing is stacking, and stacking is something that I haven't really gone over. So imagine that we have this picture of this Chihuahua in a raw file. If I were to edit it and send it into Photoshop and do some adjustments and then hit save, it would automatically send this image back. It would save the raw file here and then the edited version over here. So we'd have the same image twice. Stacking is you can take both the raw and the PSD file and put them on top of each other and it shows it as a little stack. What it does is save room. But you can obviously collapse a stack or expand a stack. It's just a way to organize your photos. It's not something that I use, but stacks are available. If it's something that you want to make 20 versions, tone 20 different ways, and you want to stack them all together, that's something that you could do there. People, this is just a search mechanism to be able to search by faces. Create virtual copy. So if you want to create a virtual copy, you can do that and send that onto the cloud. You can rotate left and right, flip horizontal, flip vertical. Next, we have set as flag. Now, I showed you how to call using stars and colors, but you could also use flagged, unflagged, and rejected. If that's the way you want to work, it's doing the exact same. Feel free. So here's the rating version and the color version. Next, we have keywords. So you could automatically set some keywords if you wanted, or you could add some keywords, meaning he would hit this and you could manually type them in, but you could simply just go over here to any image and type in this box. It's gonna do the exact same thing. Develop settings, so we can come in here, we can copy settings, paste settings, sync settings, all that stuff is available over here. There's no reason to go in here and do any of that. If you want to remove a photo, here is your option to remove a photo, which is just delete, remove selected photo, remove photo from catalog, or delete rejected photos. And the next option that we have up here is metadata. Now your metadata is located over here. If you remember on import, I showed you guys how to use metadata. All this stuff is available under metadata. There's a ton of information that you could put into it. If you're a journalist or an editorial photographer, you're gonna use the metadata a lot. It's best to do it on import to kind of get it set up. But if you needed to come in here and alter or change things like copy metadata from one image to another, you could then paste it, you could sync metadata, you can do all kinds of things. You can edit your metadata presets. 
So if you have a preset set up here and you wanted to edit, you can do it here, but you can also do it when you go into the import as well. You could import keywords. You can do anything basically that you would need to do with metadata. If it's not something that you deal with or ever want to use, you can just ignore it and forget it exists. If you're finding the information in any of these videos helpful, if you could please give me a thumbs up, that would be wonderful. If you would like to subscribe and get future videos as they come up, because I'm going to be doing a whole series on Lightroom right here, that would be great as well. All right, up here in view, we have the options to view. And this is a little confusing. I call this command plus. If you look at your keyboard, the equals and the plus are the same key. So zoom in is command plus and command minus is zoom out. Another one that's helpful is zoom to 100%. So that can actually be very helpful. Down here, there's just some quick ways to get to locations. Go to develop module, which is just the develop module. You can go right to the crop, right to the spot removal. And where these options under these menus are helpful, they always show these quick keys over here. Remember, that's just a quicker, faster way. So instead of going all the way up to view and going down here to spot removal, you can just learn the quick key, which is Q, and you'll go directly to it. I don't think anything up here is really that helpful because usually if you're going to use it, it's available as some sort of a click or an icon down here. But learning these quick keys can be helpful. And occasionally there are options that aren't available down here that are only available up here. So enable mirror image mode, you would just need two monitors to do that. Up here we have window and I've used secondary display and it doesn't really work that great in Lightroom. I'm not a big fan of it. But you've got a few different options. You could go to the library to develop the Mac, the book, the slideshow, the thing, or you could just be normal person and just click up here. There's no real reason to go up to the window, but they give you those options. And the last thing that you have here are just some helps. And a lot of the Adobe things, you can just type and find some helpful tips. And a lot of times they're adding videos now to help you with each one of those tasks. That's basically the menu items up here in what they do. There's a few things that might be helpful in general. You could probably get away with never using anything up there. Everything is available here in the program that usually you need to use. Or in my case, I'll otherwise use a quick key to access it faster. And the last thing I'm gonna show you is something that I have not come over and this is stupid paint can. And this is how this works. You click on the paint can, and then you come over here and you select what you want it to do. In this case, we're going to have it label the images. Remember, you could just hit the number six and it's going to do the exact same thing. But in this case, I'm going to have it label and we'll make it do purple. And so if I come up here now and click on the image, it's going to make it purple. Well, could I do the exact same thing by hitting a quick key? Absolutely. But that's what the little paint can does. If it's something that you want to use, feel free to get after it. Well, that's it for today's video. And in the next set of videos, I'm going to be going over actually how to tone, what to look for, what needs to be adjusted, what to be aware of when you're toning, and basically how you should approach adjusting your images.